103, I believe it is, folks. Step six, page 103. And uh, it uh, does my heart well to see uh, the men as well as the women in this uh, room are ready to uh, explore the, the uh, uh, these steps and, and, and to get better acquainted as to how to use these steps so we can be major contributors in our circle of influence, which I always say, whether it's at home or whether it's on the job, uh, even in here we can be major contributors. We might be the only big book or the example of how the program works uh, that someone will see. You know, uh, you'd be surprised who's looking at you. There are your, uh, residents here that are on your floor, and they can see, actually see the difference in you. And you can work on their conscience just by being an example, you know. And, and, and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll continue to examine you and watch you until they finally say, you know what, I want some of that. And you'll start to see them down there in these classrooms as well. And I want, they want some of this. And, you know, I tell you what, if you don't believe that, how many of us, uh, weren't smokers, but we were around people that smoked, and eventually we said, well, I want to try that. I, I, can you remember that? Just being around a person. Or with smoking marijuana. You know, you weren't a marijuana smoker. You see, uh, we have an influence on, on, on individuals. And that's, uh, 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 that's the human nature to, uh, uh, to, to be influenced. We influence people either for, for good or bad. As well as, a matter of fact, Bill, would you turn to that chapter? Is it in 1 Corinthians where it says, be careful of association? Uh, uh, I want to say that's 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. Uh, it might be 2 Corinthians. Uh, association, and, and it, it works both ways. It's a double-edged sword. It, it, it works, uh, actually, Bill, the 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse... 14, unequally yoked. That's where we're at. Oh, I like that too. Yeah, work with that, Bill, if you will, for us. Uh, I like you. Maybe. Uh... <laughs> okay, we're going to go through some things. I like this, Bill. Remember how they talk about whether in stripes, but in all things, approving ourselves, in all things. Now, you know what? God is good. And Major says that He gives us what we need according to the circumstances. And I needed this. This uh, uh, verse right here because it it goes in with chap with up number six. Let's look at our book on page one hundred three. And Bill, we're gonna go from verse four all the way down to uh, verse fourteen. But it says, check this out. Uh, we're entirely ready. And what made us ready? Having actually put our head to the plow and not let it go in terms of doing steps one through five. We're entirely ready. And he emphasizes the entirety aspect if you didn't get it. To have who? God. I can, God can. Remove. And here's the second emphasis where he emphasizes the second time if you didn't get it. This is an all or nothing deal for us at this particular time. He goes from entirely to all, which pretty much means the same thing. So he reiterates it. He says all these defects of characters. Who's going to remove them? God is. And why do I mention that? Then he has the power passage that gives us the fuel to execute this step in a meaningful way so we can benefit from it and so we can experience the rewards associated. And here's the fuel or the power passage. Humble yourselves before the Lord. And he will what? Lift you up, beyond, and through whatever that challenge that you're dealing with. He'll lift you up. You don't need to elevate yourself. You don't need, how about this one? I'm going to get even. Are you, you don't need to get even. Are you following what I'm saying? But here's my point that I want to make in terms of how we can be, how we can influence people by uh, coming down here and, and, and entertaining the, the possibilities and, and the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, principles that we find in terms of these steps and going up to the floors and being major game changers. And people will really want to, in terms of influences, being, being yoked with them because we're in this building. They, they will want a piece of this. And they're watching you. So, Bill, here we go in verse 4. It says, but in all things. Now, that, that starts it off real good. Because our step says, all these defects. And this, this, this verse of the Bible uh, starts out with all these things. So, we're all in all. All in all, we're about to get into this. Bill, will you help me from verse 4 to uh, verse uh, 10, uh, verse 14, my brother. And we're talking about the influences that we're under, whether we realize it or not. We're under influence all the time. Bill, help me out with that, brother. But in all things we command ourselves as ministers, commend ourselves as, as ministers of God. Amen. In the much patient, in much patience and tribulation. Amen. And in 
need of and in need in distress. Much, amen. In stripes and imprisonment and mm -hmm. tumults and labors and sleeplessness and fasting. Amen. By purity, by knowledge, by mm -hmm. long suffering, Come on, by kind, kindness, by the Holy Spirit, Come on, by both. sincere love, by the word of truth, mm -hmm. by the power of God, Come on, by the armor of righteousness mm -hmm. on the right hand right. and on the left, by honor and dishonor, <laughs> by evil report and good report, as deceivers and as true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we mm -hmm. live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrow, yet also rejoicing as poor, Amen. yet making many rich, <laughs> as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Come on, brother. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. Amen. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affliction. My Lord. Now, in return for the same, I speak to the uh, to the children. I speak as to children. Amen. You also be open. Come on, brother. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Come on, brother. And what communion has light with darkness? Influences. We're talking about some influences, and we're about to go right into. We're about to right to go. This this fits us real well for this group. Because what we're about to talk about is the different seasons of recovery. As we, as we talked about earlier, Bill, in terms of being, Jerry, in terms of being in the slump, going through some situations and circumstances, and, and he names the situations and circumstances, we may think that we're actually prepared to, to, to coast in terms of having done these steps, but he just, Paul has just listed the, the various challenges that we're still going to experience even as believers. Even as as as, as 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 Christians or in the body of Christ or even trusting and believing that He's going to deliver us, we're going to go through some through some situations. But we learn what those situations are. We shouldn't be shocked because we've done steps one through five. Uh, Bill, would you like to expand on that a little bit, brother? Well, what what he's talking about being unequally yoked together here. Uh, some people apply that to, to uh, people being getting married, which I guess it could be applied to that. But actually, it's talking in, in, the, in the full context of uh, uh, spiritually being yoked together with unbelievers. Come on, brother. are not supposed to do that. Now, in, in relationship to, uh, to, like, the 12 steps, I would have to say, like in my own life, um, uh, Keeping myself out of a situation, say I don't want to drink. Amen. I can't put myself in a situation where there's going to be a lot of drink. And sometimes people are expected to drink if you show up, say, at a party, you know. Uh, Come on, brother. Uh, in that relationship, I'm not going to be put myself in a situation, uh, even with those people, if they're doing something I don't want to do. Come on now. But, um, like, in... In Corinthians, he was speaking to believers. Come on, brother. And and he was talking to believers about being unequally yoked together to unsaved people where spiritual matters are concerned, I'm sure, is what he was talking about. Because in daily life, we still have to go to work and, there it is. and do all the different things in the world. Bring it on. You know, we're not supposed to, uh, actually, Amen. we're not even supposed to pray with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes to the Father except by Jesus. And if somebody isn't praying in Jesus' name, then they're praying to a different guy. Well, let me ask you this: While we and you, you've you've given us a, a a plethora, just a bounty of information that we can apply in our everyday residency uh, 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 stay here in terms of going up on the floors. We know there are certain, you know, some people on the floors are just contentious that they just, they got nothing good to say. Some of the time you can be around people, you can be trying your hardest and they just don't have nothing good to say. But they must be paying you some attention <clears throat> to take the time to find out, that, to be contrary, that they're interested, but they just don't know how to let down that, that armor or, or they don't know how to say, reach out 
as we're reaching out to God and we're saying we're entirely ready to have God make this change on us, they haven't worked the steps, so they don't know the steps that are required to reach out to have God be entirely ready to deal with the, the issues that they're actually having to be confronted with. So what it says here is, is that we're going to be, we're going to be challenged, when, even up on the floors, by people that aren't quite ready to grasp the program, but they're watching you. And you can make the difference in terms of them saying, you know what, I'm going to give this a shot. Are you following what I'm saying? You can make the difference. But it doesn't say it's going to be smooth sailing. Bill, let me have a little bit of that. And anybody else, we can, we can, we can, we're going to, we're going to, you know, naturally, I'm not going right to name any names here, but say I walk into the John at 1.30 in the morning, and uh, somebody's in there, you know, smoking a joint. And he says, hey, man, want some? Come on, now. No, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hang around and talk to them, socialize with them. If that's going to be a temptation for me, influences. I'm get out of there. Influences, come on, now. Influences. So we know, as Major often says, we know we can get anything we want at any given time. We got one up because we know where that's at. So we don't want to put ourselves in the position of being influences in terms of uh, 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 crossing over and engaging in that type of behavior. Let's move a little bit further. I think that's pretty good in terms of influences. There, you know, I, my point of it was I'm glad to see uh, you're dedicated and committed to coming and examining these steps. Let's look at the under, understanding aspect of it. And what he talks about, we'll go a little bit further about that being unequally yoked. He says, understanding step five and step six, uh, where we're entirely ready, having, having uh, examined and, 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 and discussed and worked steps one through five. Uh, when a farmer works uh, a field, he begins with soil preparation. We prepare through steps one through five. And the farmer plows, he's disc, he harrows, he fertilizes, he harrows again, and he finally planted. There have been some principles and concepts in terms of working these steps and some power passes that have been planted in you. You've got to give the, what's been planted in you in terms of these steps a time to grow and develop. There comes a time when you just have to sit back and, and, and allow uh, the growth to take place. It, you know, we, we've done it. We've admitted to God to ourselves and to another human being. We put the pen down and we trust God in terms of building that relationship with him to do the work. Uh, uh, i tell you what. Uh, while we over there, Bill Major, if you will, I think it's somewhere. Let's try 1 Corinthians where it says God gives the increase. You can't make it. You can't make it happen. You, you're expected to do uh, a certain work and you wait for God to do the rest. Uh, I want to say, is that it, brother? Yeah. Thank you, brother. Uh, I appreciate it. Why don't you give us, a, give us a little bit of that, if you would? You're right on time. Uh, you came. Uh, good to see you here again today. And uh, you're right on time for the work that we need to get, get accomplished here today in a meaningful way amongst all of us in terms of these uh, uh, experiences and encounters that we're going to have uh, uh, amongst, even while we're working the program. Uh, what verse is that? Let's look at that. Corinthians 3. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as carnal, as Amen. saved in Christ. Amen. I said you with meat and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. Until now. now you are still not able. Amen. For you are still carnal, for where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, you are are you not carnal and behaving as men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers to whom you believe that God gave to each one? I planted Apollos water. Planted, God amen. Gave the Keep going, brother. It sounds good. So then, neither he who plants is anything, Come on. nor he who waters, but God. Bring it home. Who's giving us the increase? So there's a, there comes a point where you put down the tools. It, it, is, it doesn't say that you do that you haven't done the work. You mean it doesn't matter if I say, I've been speaking the word for 40 years. Major, help me. And out. it's all about me. I know. You don't, you know, see how dumb that sounds? Come on, Major. Because if God isn't in it, mm -hmm. you could be doing the best work that you ever do. You're doing it for self and you're not doing it for God. And Amen. that's not a sign of leadership. Mm -hmm. A good leader follows direction. Mm -hmm. 
and the first direction you have to follow is to somebody else is going to do the groundwork. Mm -hmm. Don't expect to be patted on the back for somebody else's groundwork because that's their job. But you keep adding to that groundwork. Come on, Major. Mm -hmm. People who volunteer and help you make you look good. Come on, Major. And if you don't allow them to do their job, what's the first thing you learn in volunteering or helping somebody? When somebody wants to help you and you don't let them, you're making them miss the blessing that God has prepared for them by Bill. allowing them to add to whatever you've done. Come on, man. And God's going to bless it. I like you what you're bringing out, Major, in terms of the team aspect yeah. of this. There, there are many. Can any? Can we sit at this table and be honest about when we look back over the influences and the people that actually invested in our lives, mm -hmm. that that played a meaningful role in our life, and we can even while we're here at Arbor Life, we can think about you know this person really did. I didn't see it at that particular time. May have been in relationships. May have been a teacher. May have been an aunt. But you know what? Though they really did uh, uh, they really influenced me in a major way and now I can think about some of the things that they that they've done uh, over the period of, and now I'm ready for it but God is going to give that increase a lot of us would think you know what I should have a house right now I should have a good job right now let the work happen God's going to give it to you but as we talked about what we're going to see now let's go a little bit, little bit further here and uh and, uh, Bill, I want you to give us a, a better understanding. But my sister right there, if you would read, uh, we want to look at Ecclesiastics chapter 3. Bill, I want you to give us some clarity on that once she reads it, if you would, please, brother. Ecclesiastic chapter 3. I like the way we started in this out. Because we're being realistic. It ain't going to be sunshine and blue skies all day long. There are going to be some challenges and some people that irritate us. But we're learning that we're entirely ready to have God remove us from that situation. Are you following what I'm saying? Remove those obstacles. We're at 71. Okay. We're trusting God, not ourselves. And that's a that's a major, you know what? You need to give yourselves a hand right now. That's a, that's a major step in the right direction where now you're trusting God. Hey, does that can anybody can can you uh, I see that the growth that you made already where you it's not so much me and I'm doing it. I'm trusting God now. That's a major accomplishment. So here we go. I want to read this on page 103 in our study manual. What it says is, it says in step six, that second paragraph, activity ceases for what? Season. For a season. And here's what we done as we went off into the uh, 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 that, that first reading, which was was that in first was that in first Corinthians where we said it, it's it's uh, Bill, which 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 one did we read first? Was that major, major, where it says it through, I yeah, yeah, well, so what I'm saying is he gave us various, unequally yoked, he gave us various examples where, where we're going to be challenged in various areas in terms of, and we need to, check this out, we need, we need these meetings because we need to be around each other that encourages us, so it don't catch us by surprise and just ruin our whole day, are you following what I'm saying, but here's what he goes a little bit further, and my brother just read, where it says that, uh, God's going to get, we got to trust him to give us the increase. The power passage, it says he lifts us up. And it's a humbling experience where you start to trust God's, God to do the work as opposed to us. Faith, uh, 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 grace is, uh, 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 Major, help me out with that. What is that? Uh, 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 we're saved by grace and not by works. Not by, yes, not by works, but it's God's redemption at Christ's expense. Amen. It's already done. The job is already done. We just have to be able to accept the grace. We're saved by grace. Uh, 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 uh. We're saved by faith. By grace through faith. Okay, I'm, I'm getting. But here we go. I needed that help. Major, I love you for that. Uh, Bill and my other brother. Here we go. Sis, I want you to read that for me. And here's my point. In step six, activity ceases for a while. Well, so we're going we're gonna to see what type of, se of ceases for a season. So, sis, if you would read that uh, first uh, Ecclesiastics. All right. To everything there is a season. Amen. A time for every purpose under heaven. Mm -hmm. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. Amen. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. Oh. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. 
A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to laugh and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Mm -hmm. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with, with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in his, its time. There also, it he has put eternity in their hearts. There it is. Except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. There it is right there. See there, and I like how he ends from beginning to end. We didn't get to step six just by, on a flu. We began in step one. We're, we're going to go through uh, some, some, some challenges, and we're going to go through some struggles, and, and we talked about that in terms of being unequally yoked. You know, we're going to go through some, some, uh, uh, some experiences that we, we're not familiar, you know, that we'd rather we not go through. But then he says, you, you remember where, since where he just said, uh, th there's, there's a time to harvest what you planted. Did you remember when we said that? Bill, you want to give us give us some insight on that, brother? Actually, I think and this is good. I think that uh, verse eleven. Mm -hmm. Okay, he made everything beautiful in its time. Come on, brother. Who did it? He did it. Come on. Also, he has put eternity in in their in their hearts, mm -hmm. except mm -hmm. that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Well, the first word in the verse is he. Um, also, too, I wanted to, uh, well, God has a timetable. He's, mm -hmm. he's the providential God. He's sovereign. He's in control. Um, I turned over to Ephesians, and, um, and let me read this passage, because this kind of correlates uh, what we're talking about. Bill, I kind of butchered that up. Why you had Ephesians, would you be so <laughs> Read Ephesians chapter one and then jump right off in that. I think it's Ephesians chapter one about verse. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where it says, uh, uh, here it is, Bill. Where it says, uh, uh, we're saved by grace. No, I, I wasn't going there. I, I was talking about like. The, oh, number eight. Read one. Let me just read this one then, if you will. Go ahead. For, for one Ephesians uh, one and eight. One, no, chapter two and eight. For by grace we are saved through faith. That is so important through faith, and I, I butchered that up. Bill, have it your way. Now, expand on that seasonal aspect. And I was he's reading probably uh, Ephesians 1, uh, verse 7 through 13. That's how it, brother. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, mm -hmm. which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure in his purpose in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things. Love that word. All things, come on. Both which are in heaven and mm -hmm. which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined, that's God's timetable. Come on, Bill. Being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, mm -hmm. of your salvation. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And going back to the seasons, seasons he talks yeah. about in verse 10, dispensation, dispensation of time. Uh, it talks about according to his purpose and his pleasure, and which he made to abound toward us. He's the sovereign God. According to the counsel of his will, uh, it's his timetable. Bill, let me ask you something. Like he said, he, he, he predestined. If, if we could just get a piece out of what I want to really get, what I would like to add to that as, a, as well, he has an eternal perspective on this. Are you following what I'm saying? There's no reason why we shouldn't. The, the new, uh, ex, this, this new feeling that we have, this new spiritual 
uh, uh, experience that we're encountering now, the benefits and opportunities that are starting to present themselves, the ability for us to be delivered uh, out of out of these struggles that we're that we're being challenged by, uh, doors that are opening, a relationship where we can call on God and because He's sovereign over situations and circumstances. What I'm saying here is, what I'm the point that I'm trying to make here is this relationship you have to have. Uh, uh, not only we said, when we talked about from beginning to end, you have to have an eternal person. He has an eternal perspective, not just for now. You could be winners forever. You know, it, it is so hurtful. How many people can identify with this? It is so hurtful. Well, it, it talks about that. I might be in First Timothy where we start out a good race and, and we don't finish the race. You know, you, you, things just look like it's really going real well for you. And then all of a sudden, you run out of gas or, or the bottom falls out. What I like about God is he has an eternal perspective to get you through that entire race where you can actually be winners from now on. My brother at the end. Well, you used the uh, phrase earlier, seasons of recovery. Were you referring to the process that occurred? Yeah, more, more so, more so the the... The slump, and I'll make this example. We talked about this in the, in the first group. Any, is anybody familiar with baseball? You know that they're, man, I, I'm like you, sis. You know, I'm like you. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. My, the, my seat should collapse up under me talking about baseball. But you know what? And, and this is very relevant here. You have superstar Hall of Famers that have a slump. They know them. You can, you can they, man, you know when they put the ball in their hand, it's going out the park. Well, there's a period, in terms of what I was talking about, there's a period where it just seemed like you can't connect. You're in a slump. You're doing, you're doing everything that you normally do. You've got the technique down. You're working the steps. Are you following what I'm saying? You're going to meetings. Are you following what I'm saying? You're, you're in good company. You're, you're, not, you're, not, you're, you're not around substance abusers and what have you. you know, you're not part of the party group. But, but this baseball player... He just has to, the the coach will tell you he just got to come out this slump. They don't trade him. Are you following what I'm saying? They, huh? Help me out. Unless you're clean. Well, <laughs> well you, you, now you you thoroughly understand what I'm saying, right? And he leaves there, and he's a winner on a Hall of Famer. Is that not true? He's a Hall of Famer wherever he goes, and we experienced that in Cleveland Indians so many times, right? So what I'm saying is, each and every one of us are Hall of Famers. You're just going through a season, in terms of your question, where you're in a slump. You know, it just seems like I'm doing, anybody major, you're familiar with that. It seems like I'm doing the right things, and it's just, we already talked about this. It's a season that you're going through. Help me out, brother. Yeah, but yet, isn't that part of the process that God takes us through to be conformed to the image of his son? I mean, we go through different things. Well, I think we want to do Romans. How about Romans five on that? Is that is that somewhere around there? Let's look at Romans five and give me your. I like. I'm glad you brought that up in terms of getting some clarity to the season aspect. Let's see what Romans five has to say about that. The process. What does that? What does going through those seasons actually prepare us for? Let's look at Romans. That was an excellent, excellent. I want to give you. I can't give you enough credit for that. Uh. Uh. Uh oh. We're going to do Romans 5, and then, of course, the, the more famous one is James. But let's do Romans 5. And my brother, since you brought that up, would you be so kind to read uh, the process and, and where we go with that? And we'll end up at 5 and 8. What he's preparing us for in terms of deliverance that we didn't know that was available with available to us, in terms of being overcoming those struggles that we didn't know that was available to us, he was ready to bring us out of that slump. While we were yet in that slump. Are you following what I'm saying? My brother, would you read that if you would from 1 to 8? Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith access. into this grace in which we stand mm -hmm. and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, not but only. we also glory in tribulation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Knowing that tribulation... Bring what? Perseverance. Come on now. And per perseverance. Character. Come on now. And character. Hope. Hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God love. has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Who Come on now. Given to us. Mm -hmm. Give it. When we were still without strength, in due time Christ died. We. Come on. For a righteous man mm. will one die, yet perhaps for a good man. Good man. 
would even dare to die. Mm. But God demonstrates his own love. Hold on, hold on. Who made the difference but who? But God. Come on, huh? Demonstrates his own love mm. towards us. In that while we were still sinners, wow. Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. Now I like this. You see what I'm saying? We're going through this slump. Can you can you can you connect that with, with what I was trying to bring out in terms of that season aspect? Where we're going, what what it prepares us for, better yet. Why it's necessary to go through that process. Does that make Paul, does that make any sense? Paul, you you you're a man of the world. You know how you this seem like there are times when everything seemed like it's going right, and then there's times where you just can't you just can't get it right. Like, what else is going to happen? Right. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. But, uh, is that making this? My brother, have you ever experienced that? It makes you want to, Marvin Gaye say, make me want to holler and <laughs> throw up both my hands. <laughs> it's like, never, no matter what you do, it's never good enough. Or come on. It's always something bad that's going to come down. Mm. But it, I have, you know, issues, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I, Amen. I could try doing something good. I could be doing, you know, good, but in the end, something always comes bad out of it. You Come know on, what I'm saying? I could be doing good on probation or whatnot, and I have one slip up, and I've got all the way back. Come on, now. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what we're doing now, we're learning now, is that we're entirely ready to have God remove all those defects of character where we start to say, you know, I should be able to make the difference. No, God is going to do it. He gives the increase. But there's a process where we got to go through, and we're doing that in terms of working these steps. We can't make it happen. But there's another one, if uh, someone would be so kind to read James, that tells us even more what the process, uh, how the process prepares us to be good workers, to be uh, uh uh, 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 effective workers of the recovery program and positioning us to, to experience the benefits and the rewards that are associated with being effective workers in relationship to our, our uh, reliance on God who can do all things. Uh, uh, so let's look at uh, James, if you will. Let's look at James and see what the process, that was an excellent question that you brought up, my brother. In time, that was a good example of some times. And uh, nobody trades that baseball player just because he's uh, uh, in a slump. And Unless you're Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, you know, look at Brian Edwards. I mean, we traded him, he's about to go to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. That's just another prime example. Yeah. Okay. Now we want to go from, we want to start with the wood. We want to go to verse, we'll start at verse 1. And, uh, and uh, I would like to say, uh, he says, uh, if, you know, in terms of us having good wisdom, and uh, so I tell you what, let's go through the process, and we're going to go from verse one to uh, eleven eighty-two. There it says, "Let's let's go to verse one and and stand on the course." We'll end up at verse eight. Eight. Who, who would like to read that? Anyone? Bill, I want you to give us some clarity on that once we finish it. In in terms of uh, 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 going through the process. And, and how it, these experiences prepare us, even in terms of people upstairs in, in, the, in this facility that, that may be difficult to get along with, or monitors that may be difficult, to, you can't quite get with them, there. but going through that process, there's, there's a beneficial, there's, there's rewards that are preparing you, they're preparing you and getting you ready uh, for, for your Hall of Fame experience in terms of uh, working these steps. Are you following what I'm saying? There's a, there's a, there's a, a method to the madness. Any, does that make any sense? And God knows it. And he has your best interest at heart. Eternal interest. We only can see so far. But he sees. He, he's the only one that can take the past, present, and future. of Even what we've done. And we've just said uh, while we were yet sinners. While we were doing that. He can take our past, present, and future. He says God. Uh, Christ died for us. He commended his love towards us. While we, were, while we were unlovable, his love was always available there. So here's my point and what I'm trying to say. And I don't want to beat this horse too, too long. He can take our wretched past. He can take uh, our present and future and combine all of that in terms of history, which is a mystery to us, and make it a, make it a beneficial experience. As they say, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Is that, that's, almost, that's, that's almost unheard of, but God can do that. So who wants to read that? Uh, one through... Uh, we're going to wrap it up in terms of the benefits of going through this process. Who would like to read that? One through eight. My brother got me. Thank you, brother. James, a bondservant of God and the Lord of Jesus Christ, 
to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greetings. My brother, count it all joy mm -hmm. when you fall into various trials, oh, man. knowing that the testings of your faith Test. produces patience. Mm -hmm. But let patience have its perfect work, Come on, huh? that you may be perfect and Thank complete, you, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, here's the thing I want to mention. He says, he says, if you want to ask for something major, you just met, you made a, uh, and a, a, you kind of highlighted people want to get credit. But he says, if you want to, I think this goes with that. If you want to ask for something, ask with wisdom. Don't ask some stuff that you're not ready to have. Did God really put it on your heart to ask that? Has there been any indication that you're ready, having worked steps one through five, to receive what it is that you ask it? And if you really want it that bad in terms of whatever it is that you're asking, and all of us has hope, dreams, and aspirations, but he says that, he says he's ready to deliver that, but be wise about what you ask. And if you don't, if you're not ready, first of all, is that it? Does that make any sense, brother? He says, if you ain't, if you're if you're not sure, ask God. And by the time we get to step number six, he says we should be, uh, as as we read before, my brother read that in terms of us, uh, I, I want to say. Uh, was that 1 Corinthians chapter 3? Was that it? It says that we, we have grown to be in meat. We should have an understanding by now in terms of what we want. But there's nothing wrong with not clearly understanding. We, but we need to ask God. And we've gotten to a relationship now where we can actually ask him what it is. Is this in our best interest? Is it in my best interest to leave Arbor Lights right now and go home with my mother? Or back to that, uh, that, that, that unhealthy relationship? Is it in my best interest to go get all my kids out of foster care right now? Should, do I have to, should I get a house first or should I go to some more classes and, and to learn how to be a better parent, man or woman? Are you following what I'm saying? There are some things that, uh, are there some anger issues that I, am I ready to, to, to be uh, understanding with that child as opposed to being abusive to him? Are you, you following what I'm saying? Am I ready for that long-term commitment? Major, help me out that, if you will. Yes, and, and, and usually I, I tell people before they ask, ask themselves these three questions. Do I really need what I'm asking for? Amen. Can I really afford it? Because it's going to cost me something. I'm not talking about money. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to have a change of what? A, B, C, attitude, behavior, and conduct. Do I really need it? Can I afford it? And if I get it... Is it going to benefit somebody else besides me? Come on, Major. Mm -hmm. Is it going to help somebody if I get what I'm asking for? Is it going to be a benefit to my family, to my friends, to my job, to my church, or am I just asking because I'm selfish and I want it to happen for me? So do you remember those three things and then go to petition? And what is it? it acts, adoration, and then you have confession. And then you give thanks, and then you give your supplication, and that's when you, how you pray about it. Bill, look like you want to say something about that, in terms of uh, going through you want to, going through the process and what he's preparing us for. And here's the beautiful thing about it: he says once he gives you wisdom, you can be wise in most areas, most areas. But we say wisdom Not wishy -wishy -wishy. with common sense. This Come on, Bill and I were agreeing at the table. It's all right to ask for wisdom, but if you don't have common sense to go along with that on, wisdom. Major. You're foolishly going to get something you think that I'm, I'm the wisest person in common sense has not entered into the picture. Bill, did you want to say something about that? Well, there's a, a just a... As we run out of time a little bit and we there, close this up. There's a principle in, in James 1, 8 where a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's a principle that applies to, to everybody all the time. Okay. But what they're talking about here is the principle of uh, the double-mindedness is them believing in, in trusting in God and then turning away from that. That's their double-mindedness. And when they talk about, you know, prayers being answered, that's faith in the one that answers the prayers, not in just the prayer itself. So we want to stay the course, would you say, Bill? Yeah. We should stay the course. Stay the course. Actually, here in verse 12, it says, Blessed is a man is the man who endures temptation. Come on, brother. For when he has been uh, approved, 
he will receive the crown of life, My Lord. which the Lord has promised to those who, he, who love him. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he was, is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has, has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Now let me ask you this, Bill, before we go any further. That, no, you know what, in, in terms of that, and I, I like the way that you brought that out, there's that second aspect of the process. You, you follow what I'm saying? There's the wisdom aspect of it, and then now he's explaining where if we're not wise and we continue to do that, the end is going to be certainly not to our favor, but to our demise. Are you, does that make any sense? So he balances that out, which also we should be able to balance out in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of our inventory. We said our good and bad. But here's, we, we're running out of time. But here's what I want to uh, uh, bring, this, uh, uh, bring this into focus with. Everything that we talked about in terms of covering all of these bases is what this step actually uh, requires that we focus on. It says, we entirely. Are you ready for this entirely? For a brand new you. And then he says, are you entirely ready to what? Not me, not my will, but God. Are you entirely ready to have God removed? And he's going to remove them. Oh, man, I like to do this. I got to say this, and then we're going we're gonna to move expeditiously and just touch a few of these paragraphs and wrap this up. We got to wrap this theory aspect up. Hey, are you ready for this? God is going to remove some people out of your way that uh, you may not want to be ready for him to remove out of your way. But it's God's will. In terms for you to, as we say, it is a time to plant for you to, and it's a time to, 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 to harvest what you planted. God has done such a work on you. There's some people that he's required to move out of your life for you to get the harvest that he's actually uh, 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 worked in you in terms of having done those steps. Are you following? Does that make any sense, Paul? There, there are some people that you want to hold on to uh, 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 that uh, got to go. Relationships. There's some relationships. You want to keep going back because you're familiar with it, but God can see the long-term ramification of you going back to that relationship. That relationship has got to go. The dog returns to his vomit. Uh, hey man, hey, hey man, and then he says, you know what? And we we can go look since we're dealing with spirituality. He says, uh, when that spirit gets back in you, he said, uh, what is it, Bill? Is it seven times worse? Yeah, yeah. Se seven times that seven, spirit. Seven spirits, and you'll be the man worse, than worse than what you were going back to that. So he's gonna remove some things out of your life. Let's move. Let's move a little bit further. Uh, let's look at this. At the next paragraph, man, we got this activity must cease for a se season. Let's look at the working step six. And it says, uh, are we ready to have God bring these changes in our lives? And we pretty much went into that real good. Let's go over to page 104, preparing for step six. He says, by quieting our mind and opening our hearts up. You know, we were, how about this one? We were pretty cold hearted. Now, we, 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 God has massaged our hearts. He's warmed us up. We feel, you know, we're feeling where we never felt before. God is, is working on the heart. And, of course, as, as, as Bill said earlier, there's, there's prayer. You know, we're talking about believers. You, you've been convinced at this particular point. Let's look on page 105. And he's talking about having completed. He discusses having completed. Did you do the work? Where you can actually wait for a season for God to give us the increase. It's nothing. If you don't put, if you don't put nothing in, you get nothing out. So he says steps one through five, uh, having completed, having done the work. But we can't stop there. And then he goes on the further. He says one and two, we recognize our powerlessness, powerlessness. And in steps three, we turn our will. In other words, we repent. Having reviewed, did these steps, we don't want to go back there. So we're turning. We're turned away from that. We, we're, 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 uh, 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 uh. As you said, repenting, we're turning, we're acknowledging that there's no, there's no future for us back there. And uh, as we go down to the second paragraph, it says, step one through five helps us. Now, I, you might have missed this one. This is, this is a good one. Look at this. Steps one in the second paragraph through five help to steer us. You might have missed that. 
steer us in the right direction. Why? We're not rolling with ourselves. Us is your relationship with God. God is actually in the driving.